Folks, CBS News facing even more backlash after an internal memo instructed journalists not to refer to Jerusalem as part of Israel. According to the Free Press, the memo sent by CBS News Senior Director of Standards Mark Mehmet in late August reportedly told reporters and producers, quote, yes, the U.S. Embassy is there and the Trump administration recognized it as being Israel's capital, but its status is disputed, end quote. Let's bring in our panel to react. Mark Klein, president of the Zionist Organization of America, and Curtis Houck, managing editor of Newsbusters. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Mort, you first. The memo reportedly went on to further explain their decision, saying, quote, Israel regards Jerusalem as its eternal and undivided capital, while the Palestinians claim East Jerusalem as the capital of a future state, which is kind of strange as Jerusalem is nowhere near the Gaza territory. What is your reaction to CBS's editorial stance? Mm -hmm. CBS News is lying to their viewers by not telling the truth about Jerusalem. It, it's a disgrace for any news organization. Jerusalem has been the capital of Israel for 3,000 years. It's never been the capital of any other nation except Israel. And since 1850, the first census, the majority of people living in Jerusalem have been Jews, not Muslims, not Christians. 700 times the word Jerusalem appears in the Jewish holy books. In the holy book of the Muslims, the Koran, zero times, not a single time. And when they controlled Jerusalem from 1948 to 1967, they allowed it to become a slum. They didn't care about it at all. And, and they claim Muhammad went from Jerusalem to uh, heaven. But if you read the Koran, it doesn't say that. It says that Muhammad went from a sacred mosque to heaven. And when the Koran was written, there was not a single mosque in Jerusalem. So it couldn't be Jerusalem. Uh, moreover, it, it was a dream that Muhammad ha had. It never even happened. And in terms of Christianity, when they took over from 1467, the, the Muslim Arabs, they destroyed churches. They wouldn't allow rebuilding churches, renovating churches. 70% of the Christians hmm. left Jerusalem. They were treated so badly by the, the Muslims. So what's ast astonishing oh, yeah. is Jerusalem, and no one else will say this, there is no evidence that Jerusalem is holy to Muslims. It's just one way to steal Judaism's holiest place from the Jewish, from the Jewish people. And just because they dispute it, so what? They also dispute Israel's well, existence. Yeah, I mean, Does that mean CBS should well, not look recognize at Israel because the Arabs say Israel shouldn't exist, it's stolen land? No. This is a huge disgrace. People should just lose all sorts of respect for CBS. I, for one, I'm going to stop listening to CBS News in any event. Well, Curtis, that's, that's probably a good rule of thumb for everybody. In my interview with President Trump, I asked him about CBS and their, their left-wing bias and his own experience with the network. Here's what he told me. It's also election interference. It also is license threatening. You know, they have a license from, that's not cable. They, here they have a license from the federal government. And they, they pay nothing. They pay peanuts. They pay nothing. They should take that license away from CBS. So is he right? Has CBS crossed the line from simple fake news and left-wing extremist tilt to openly conducting election interference? Yeah, Chris, election interference is exactly the right term that I would use to describe CBS. You have to remember that CBS is really going through it right now in terms of uh, undermining its own credibility. You have the disastrous VP debate. You have this scandal that we're talking about here. You have the 60 Minutes interview with Kamala Harris with the butchered clips and not releasing a transcript. Um, and, and now you have what happened with Mike Johnson on Sunday. So all four of these stories uh -huh. together, I guess Israel's story sh shows that they're uh, a little bit more focused on internal uh, warfare, shooting at each other and letting the inmates run the asylum than actual journalism. How about that? It's a but novel I'm going to get to the Johnson. Know, but I know, I know. I'm going to get to the Johnson thing here in a minute, but more just to add some, put another log on this fire. CBS News, this report comes amid a broader internal tensions at CBS News, highlighted by uh, the network admonishing CBS Morning co-host Tony Docupil over this interview with a left-wing writer, uh, uh, Ten Tenhisi Coates, I believe I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Watch. I'm working with uh, the person that is guiding me, is a Palestinian whose father, whose grandfather and grandmother was born in this town. And I have more freedom to walk than he does. 
Is why that, is that okay? Why is that? Why why is there no agency in this book for the Palestinians? They they exist in your narrative merely as victims of the Israelis, as though they were not offered peace at any juncture, as though they don't have a stake in this as well. What is their role in the lack of a Palestinian? I have a very, 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 very moral compass about this. And again, perhaps it's because of my ancestry. Either apartheid is right or it's wrong. It's 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 really, really simple. Either what I saw was right or it's wrong. So, more reports indicate that CBS actually admonished their own reporter for pushing mm -hmm. back on Coates and saying there was another <laughs> side to the story. What does this tell you? What a Jew-hating liar Coates is. Apartheid Arabs that represent 22% of, of Israel have every right that a Jew has, that a Christian has. They vote. They're in the Supreme Court. They're 10% of the, of the parliament. <laughs> Uh, they can if they go to school wherever they wish it's it's such a huge lie and not to mention four times in the last 20 years israel offered the palestinian arabs a state they turned it down every time and do you know why they turn it down because they have to sign a clause that says we accept israel as a jewish state and uh, abbas has told the prime yeah. ministers of israel we will never write that down so this uh, yeah and this is you just want to an see astonishing an apartheid statement seat. by yeah, you want to see an apartheid. See how Christians are treated in that region. I mean, if you really want to see an apartheid. Curtis, <laughs> Speaker Mike Johnson did what every Republican and every conservative should do, either go live or record your interview with entities like okay. CBS because of these documented breaches of, eth uh, of journalistic ethics. Johnson recorded what he said, which didn't match what CBS aired. Watch. So that's a different accounting than this 2% you say was distributed. Yeah, so they've obligated some funds, but they've only distributed 2%. The rescue and recovery effort's still going on, and then we address the rest of it. So that's a different accounting than this 2% you say was distributed. Yeah, so they've obligated some funds, but they've only distributed 2%. And when I was there on the ground, and you should go, I mean, bring the cameras and talk to the people there. They'll tell you, don't, don't take politicians' words for this or the administration's word. Talk to the people there on the ground. They had not been provided the resources. Curtis, you know, I am shocked at how many Republicans still don't know that these left-wing networks are unfair, unethical, and untrustworthy, just as much as Democrats are. Are you shocked by how many Republicans don't get that? Yeah, I am, unfortunately, Chris. You know, this is something that Donald Trump showed with 60 Minutes in 2020 with Leslie Stahl with the laptop. His team was exactly right to have their side of the story, the entire thing from start to finish. When she walked in the room, he walked in the room. Uh, <clears throat> this is what the DeSantis team showed when you get requests for print comments or blog comments in online articles uh, that you got to show both ways of this. This is unfortunately the world in which conservatives uh, and just truth seeking Americans have to operate when you're dealing with misleading, uh, tyrannical, you know, whatever dishonest journalists out there. You shouldn't have to live in this world. We shouldn't have to live this way. But this is a way that we do have to live. And so nobody should be going on yeah. CBS if you're a Republican, unless it's live. And, you, and you're ready to yeah, turn unless, the, yeah, your version live. around right away. Exactly. And you know what? I don't think they should be going on these these uh, these airwaves at all because they're patently unfair, wholly owned subsidiaries of the Democrat Party. More Klein and Curtis Howe. Gentlemen, thank you for the discussion. Coming up, we're going to speak to Carrie Lake about her dominant performance at an Arizona.